I'm Nicolas Bornozis and uh, Olga Bornozis is here with me. So we both would like to welcome you to today's webinar. Today's webinar is being held with the occasion of the establishment of the Miltiadis Marinakis uh, Endowed Professorship for Modern Greek Language and Culture at the Ohio State University. And also with the occasion of the appointment of the first professor for that chair of Mr. Yorgos Anagnostou. The general support provided by Mr. Vangelis Marinakis in the memory of his late father, uh, Miltiadis Marinakis, ensures the viability and continuity at perpetuity for this academic chair and enhances significantly the effort to preserve and spread the Greek language and culture for the benefit of the Greek American society and the American society at large. The Greek American society has been evolving and changing over time. And the need to preserve our cultural heritage has becoming even more important, but at the same time, it presents significant and new challenges. At the same time, it is very important uh, to share the richness and wisdom of the Greek culture and language with a broader society, the American society and the world. And in that context, initiatives like the one of Mr. Vangelis Marinakis with the establishment and uh, the functioning of this uh, uh, academic chair really contributes significantly to preserving our heritage uh, and culture, uh, again, for the Greek American society and uh, the American society at large. We have today uh, very senior representatives from stakeholders who are involved in this process. We have with us uh, representatives from the church, from the business world, from academia, from major Greek American uh, organizations. And we are going to have a discussion on how to preserve the Greek culture and uh, language among uh, Greek Americans, and uh, as I mentioned, the society at large. I would like to thank, uh, before we start, um, Capital Product Partners for being a sponsor of this event. I would like to thank uh, all the media partners uh, and uh, I'm delighted to see the strong turnout we have today. Uh, again, uh, congratulations to Mr. Marinakis for the initiative and congratulations to uh, Mr. Anagnostou for being the first uh, professor at that chair. And now let's start with uh, a greeting from uh, His Eminence, Archbishop uh, Elpidophoros of America. Dear friends, I am delighted to join such a distinguished panel and to share my own best wishes on this wonderful occasion. The establishment of the Miltiadis Marinakis Endowed Professorship for Modern Greek Language and Culture at the Ohio State University and the appointment of its first professor, Yorgos Anagnostou, is supremely indicative of our theme today. Both cultural and educational advancement are quintessential characteristics of both Greeks and Greek Americans. We have been the Western world's teachers for millennia. Whether Empedocles or Socrates, Aeschylus or Euripides, Hippocrates or Pericles, every aspect of human endeavor has been pioneered by the Greeks. Therefore, we should proudly celebrate the ongoing commitment of Greeks, both in the motherland and in the diaspora, to the promotion and advancement of our values, cultural, linguistic, ethical, and indeed spiritual. The spiritual values of Greece are the bridge between the exceptional aspirations of the Greek philosophical mind and the preaching of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ 
which first came about in the Greek language. We cannot separate Greek culture from the Greek language, for the latter is the vehicle that conveys the former. Moreover, as Greek Orthodox Christians, we bear the awesome responsibility of safeguarding and preserving the very language of the New Testament. This language of the New Testament became the language of the liturgy and of the theology of the Church, which, as the Apostle says, is the pillar and ground of truth. Therefore, our grateful celebration of the establishment of the Miltiadis Marinakis Chair is more than a local cause for joy of the Ohio State University. It is a cause for rejoicing across the diaspora, for it bears witness to the commitment of our Laos, of our people, to the never-ending pursuit of truth, which is the very nature of the Greek soul. My friends, today's theme is not only of the moment, it is of eternity. For each of us must realize that, especially as Greeks, our lives are part of something much larger than our individual circumstances and accomplishments. We reside in this world not only to enjoy its benefits, but to be beneficial to others, to pass on monumental legacy of Greece to our progeny and to the world. By promoting and sponsoring endeavors of education and culture, we inscribe our names not into man-made monuments, but indelibly into the history of the world. The generations yet to be born will show their gratitude by etching the values of Greece into their own lives. Thus, will the seeds you plant today bear fruit for the ages? I extend my congratulations to all with a wish that today's convocation become a shining example that will be followed by many, many more to come. Thank you, and I wish you all a blessed Pascha. We are very thankful to his uh, eminence, uh, Archbishop uh, Elpidophos of America, for his uh, kind introduction and uh, for sharing his words uh, of wisdom. Uh, it is indeed very important to repeat that Greek language and Greek culture go together. And therefore, uh, again, the establishment uh, and the viability of this academic chair in perpetuity serves a much uh, bigger role in uh, preserving our uh, heritage uh, for the years to come. Uh, one of the uh, very significant uh, challenges that the Greek American community is facing is that, uh, you know, we all become part of the American society, we get assimilated, but at the same time, we cannot and we do not want to be disconnected from our Greek heritage, from our Greek culture. And the church, uh, has been a unifying uh, link uh, in the effort to preserve exactly our homogeneity, uh, our identity uh, as a society, Greek American society. And of course, uh, the uh, academic endeavors and other endeavors that we will be discussing uh, during the course of this webinar remain very important. Um, we are now going to have uh, another greeting by uh, the ambassador for excellency, Alexandro Papadopoulou, the ambassador of Greece to the United States. Uh, so I hope that uh, her greetings is uh, ready to, uh, to share with you. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to address you. 
and especially to offer my congratulations to the Board of Trustees of the Ohio State University for establishing the Miltiadis Marinakis Professorship for Modern Greek Language and Culture, with funds donated by the Hellenic Pavia of Columbus, Ohio, and lead donor, Mr. Evangelos Marinakis. I'm certain that under the direction of the accomplished scholar, Dr. Yorgos Anagnostou, this venture will reach great heights and bear extraordinary fruits. Congratulations also to Capital Links for taking the excellence it normally applies to organizing business conferences uh, to highlighting the importance of culture and education. For all of us, Greeks uh, living in Greece or abroad, uh, it is very important that education and culture stay at the center of our existence. Always curious about the world around us, being great navigators since ancient times, uh, we're eager to adopt new ideas but historically, we place great emphasis uh, on preserving our culture and learning about experiences of the world and of life. Whether a Greek of Greece or a member of the Greek diaspora outside Greece, uh, literally spread all over the world, uh, our culture and history are our real home. They provide us with a foundation upon which to build our lives and communities both in Greece and abroad. For those who emigrated, Greek history and culture are often their home away from home, factoring into who they are and providing a foundation for self-realization and awareness. After all, culture is not only acquaintance with the arts and humanities, it is a set of values, beliefs, aspirations, social practices and traditions that are shared by a people. This body of knowledge continues to be transmitted to succeeding generations, transcending boundaries and borders, making us uh, who we are and who we aspire to be. Americans of Greek descent, Americans of Greek heritage, are especially committed to this heritage and culture, a commitment that is attested by this newly established chair and by similar such initiatives throughout the United States as well as uh, the unprecedented research and interest uh, in the Greek story in America that is taking place today. This year has been especially heartwarming, as well as a great testament to this commitment. As I watch uh, the celebrations for the 200th anniversary of the Greek War of Independence, uh, I, have, I cannot but notice the ardor and pride uh, with which so many Greek heritage people and non-Greek heritage people are celebrating this anniversary. I'm also touched by so many non-Greeks, individuals, institutions and cities from Nashville, Tennessee to Missouri to New York to Massachusetts to California, so many places throughout the US, uh, which uh, by celebrating this decisive mo moment in modern Greek history, they mainly celebrated uh, Greek heritage Greek culture, Greek values, and Greek ideals, which are common to the two countries, Greece and the United States, uh, and the two peoples, Greeks and Americans. Thank you again for your kind invitation to speak, uh, and I wish you success in your proceedings and in the work to be undertaken by Dr. Anagnostou in his new post. Uh, congratulations to all. Thank you. We thank the ambassador for an insightful and also for a moving statement. Uh, it was very interesting that uh, the ambassador mentioned not only the Greek language and the Greek culture, but also the Greek values and the Greek ideals. Values and ideals which are revered throughout the world. And it was very fitting that uh, she mentioned uh, the celebration of the 200th anniversary of the Greek uh, Revolution. And I hope you will all remember, if you have seen uh, TV and YouTube, uh, how the world turned blue and white, the Greek national colors, in celebration and respect of what Greece represents for the world. 
Coming back to America, the ambassador mentioned the commitment of the Greek American community to maintain, preserve, and enhance our heritage. And Mr. Marinakis will be the next speaker. And uh, it is really important to pay tribute to the initiative that he took. Mr. Marinakis is a Greek citizen, but at the same time, he's a citizen of the world. And it was very insightful that he saw the need to help preserve the Greek heritage and culture where it's needed most in the diaspora. Because even though we live miles and miles away from Greece, we want to be connected with Greece. And one of the ways to be connected is exactly by preserving institutions that uh, help uh, maintain our Greek uh, language and culture. So Mr. Marinakis uh, endowed his chair in the memory of his late father, Mr. Miltiadis Marinakis, a well-respected businessman and philanthropist who instilled Mr. Marinakis with a sense of duty, a sense of duty towards his fellow man and the society. Uh, and also, Mr. Marinakis is a proud Greek. And there's no better way to share his pride by exactly showing his commitment through this uh, endowment of the academic chair. So I hope uh, that uh, we can now show the uh, greeting of Mr. Marinakis. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a great honor for me to be able to contribute to the preservation and propagation of the modern Greek language and culture. In the course of my life, I have come to appreciate how vital it is for us to educate the future generations about Greek culture and modern Greece especially in the U.S., which is home to a vibrant Greek-American community. I have been particularly concerned about the availability of such education since I know that the study of civilization is decreasing as universities and governments tend to reallocate their resources from the humanities towards the sciences. This is a troubling developing that I wish to address through my philanthropic work. We would like young people from all over the world to have access to modern Greek language and culture. It's not only a way to preserve the cultural identity of Greek Americans, but also to introduce people of other ethnic or multicultural origins and nationalities to our culture. For this reason, when I heard about the fundraising initiated by the Greek American community in Columbus, Ohio, I decided that I had to contribute and help bring this effort to fruition. The Modern Greek Studies Department that was established in the 70s through a collaboration between first generation Greek Americans and the university needed support to establish itself in perpetuity during these uncertain times. The Miltiadis Marinakis endowed professorship for modern Greek language and culture at the Ohio State University has thus been established honoring my late father, a passionate supporter of Greek ideals himself. My father came from his homeland, the island of Crete, to Piraeus in the 70s. He believed in the ancient Greek ideals as they were passed to him through his parents, the Cretan dialect, the magnificent literature of Nikos Kazatzakis, the Cretan Madinades that he often composed, the Cretan Lyra, the ideals of the war for independence, and many other aspects of growing up in Crete. This he passed on to me and I passed them to my children. Especially the books of Nikos Kazatzakis have influenced significantly my family and myself. Towards our passion and love for our country and for its people and our self-responsibility in our own lives. This is one of the reasons that I have been also supporting the continuing operation of the Kazantzakis Museum in Crete since 2014. Given this cultural interest and the ideals of my family, I'm particularly happy to endow the continuous teaching of modern Greek literature at Ohio State. My mother, who hails from the Pontus region and descends from the prominent Ypsilantis family, carries a different kind of heritage, that of the Pontic dialect, the legends of the heroes of the 1821 Greek War of Independence, the distinct cooking and musical traditions and memories of the lands that they were left behind after, of course, the tragic Pontic genocide. This she passed on to me and I passed them to my children. Throughout my life, I have been a strong supporter of initiatives 
to commemorate the genocide of the Greeks of Pontus. Looking at my family, I can see our rich cultural heritage and wonder who would be without it. These and many more traditions are studied today in the modern Greek studies program at Ohio State University that we managed to preserve. We are thus safeguarding for future generations of students in Ohio in perpetuity our cultural identity, a main element of who we are. I'm very proud and pleased to be part of this great action. Thank you all. So, of course, we thank Mr. Marinakis again for his generous contribution and very significant contribution. One of the things I would like to mention before I turn the floor over to Mr. Anagnosto is exactly Mr. Marinakis told us about how his father passed values to him and how he's passing them on to his children. And by endowing this chair, it's exactly uh, He's preaching, he, he's doing what he's preaching because he's helping exactly to pass on ideals uh, to a broader society from one generation to another. Uh, so um, I would like to call to the floor Mr. Uh, Yorgos Anagnoscu, who is the first uh, professor of this academic chair. And uh, Mr. Anagnoscu, thank you for being with us, and the floor is yours. Thank you, Nico, for the introduction. I would like to thank the Capital Link for organizing this important seminar. Your Eminence, Your Excellency, dear Ambassador, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, it is an honor for me to participate in this conversation. This is a day for celebration. It is a day to recognize the gifts our program has received throughout its 45 year history. It is also a day for remembering and reflecting about our mission and our, uh, and our vision for the future. Gifts in the Greek Orthodox tradition are connected with the remembering. One offers a gift and expects to be remembered through this giving. Gifts connect the giver and the receiver. Gifts connect the past the present and the future. Today is a fitting occasion to remember and remember with appreciation the gifts we have received from the Greek American community in Columbus, Ohio. It was in 1975 when the Project Pedia donated the seed money for the establishment of a modern Greek program at Ohio State. And it was in 2015, 40 years later, that the Ohio Hellenic Pedia, now a dynamic group, group of local leaders, launched the fundraising, which five, year later, five years later in 2020, to be precise, on 25th of March 2020, concluded successfully with the establishment of the Miltiades Marinakis Endowed Professorship in Modern Greek Language and Culture. We express our most heartfelt appreciation to the members of the Ohio Hellenic Pedia for their vision, determination, hard work, and substantive material contributions. It was the families of the Pedia Committee that donate, donated more than 50% of the 1 million required for the endowment. The local community added a 15%. So 65% of the endowment, $650,000, were collected locally. In this effort, a gift by Evangelos Marinakis was critical in helping the fundraising reach its goal. The endowment honors the memory of his late father, Miltiadis Marinakis. We express our deep appreciation. As we are looking forward, to our partnership and to future projects, particularly in the direction of securing a permanent lectureship position, which Dr. Christopher Brown is serving uh, right now uh, so admirably. An image is worth a thousand words, the saying has it. 
At this point, I would like to share with you four images. Four images that encapsulate the history of gifts we have received. Four images encapsulating a history of 40 years of engagement with the community. 1970s, the Pedia project. Speaking about continuity, we see Professor Vasilis Lambropoulos, Professor Giusdanis, and Artemis Lontis. Uh, and I'm just mentioning the uh, faculty uh, at the time and a number, of course, of community members that came together to start the modern Greek studies program that is thriving 45 years later. 2015, a group of friends and local leaders, many of them members of the Greek Olympic Society here in Columbus. We gathered at Ohio State and we decided to launch the fundraising, which I, as I mentioned, was a successful endeavor. And this is members of the Ohio Hellenic Pedia that in many ways were the engine behind this fundraising. Once again, we express our appreciation. In 2019, we were delighted and honored to receive Niki Kalogiratu, uh, who represented Evangelos Marinakis in an Ohio State celebration uh, and the, in many ways, um, finalization of our partnership. Let me try to stop and I, I have lost the cursor, so I'll just, okay, here we go. Okay. I should note at this point that the endowment at Ohio State is not an exception. There are at least seven endowed modern Greek chairs in the United States. Given ongoing budget cuts, endowments is the strategy to secure the presence of modern Greek learning in the United States. And I should also add and underline that many of us in Greek American studies, including senior scholars such as Dan Georgiakos, Alexander Kitroet, and Artemis Leontis, urge the endowment of centers, high quality, high quality research centers or chairs in Greek American studies so that we will be understanding the various and multifaceted developments in the politics, the culture, and the social aspects of Greek American society. As Nikos mentioned, it is evolving. And as I will mention, it is evolving rapidly and in ways we do not fully understand. How can we make policy about future leadership and future Greek American citizens if we do not understand the next generation? I encourage our audiences to visit the website of the Modern Greek Studies Association, MGSA, to learn about modern Greek programs in the United States. Gifts are not only about giving, they are also about returning. Gifts create relations of reciprocity. In this respect, the story of our program is a story not only of gifts, but also counter gifts. It is a story of gifts received and gifts given back. We have given back to Ohio State by advancing its mission. We have worked relentlessly to bring international distinction to the institution. Our program is respected internationally for the quality of its scholarship. I would like to recognize my colleague, Gregory Giusdanis, my predecessor, Professor Vasilis Lambropoulos, and Professor Artemis Leontis, who is with us today for their enormous contribution to this endeavor. Also, Dr. Christopher Brown for his devotion to teaching the Greek language. This commitment and devotion is part of our reciprocal connection with the university. We recognize that for 40 years, Ohio State has supported two full-time faculty in modern Greek and a lecturer. Ohio State is one of the few institutions in the world 
that supports a full-time faculty working on Greek American studies. For this, we express our appreciation. To Greek America, we offer a vital educational resource. We share our knowledge with students. We organize summer study abroad programs in Greece. We write for local community magazines. We maintain blogs to discuss popular culture, like films, my big fat Greek waiting. Share our understanding of this popular culture with a broader public. We publish in the Greek American and Greek media. All this beyond our academic publications and our administrative services. Our conviction is that Greek American education enriches personal lives and contributes to the civic mission of the polity, producing educated citizens in the humanities and the social sciences. To our home, the United States, as well as the world, we offer new ideas, new ways of thinking about modern Greece and Greek America. We undermine stereotypes and simplistic ways of talking about Greek identity. The title of this webinar is Culture and Education Among Greek Americans. Our conversation today takes place in the midst of a new historical development. Greek America is diversifying and it does so rapidly. We do not have a full grasp of its various directions. This is the fact, Greek America is diversifying. We are not lamenting, we are not alarmed that somehow we will lose the homogeneity, but we see it as a venue to contribute to the making of a thriving, multifaceted Greek American civic culture in the United States and elsewhere. Although we do not have a full grasp of the emerging directions, we know this in the words of a Greek American young professional I met in an American Hellenic Institute conference and I was impressed and I wrote down his words and I published actually a, a paper in the journal, uh, the policy journal that the AHI, American Hellenic Institute, um, cultivates. I quote this individual, because Hellenism is such an intricate conception and means different things to different people, it should be presented as a multifaceted entity. In other words, there are multiple ways of connecting with Greek culture. New needs, new interests, and new ideas are emerging on how to connect with Greek culture, presenting challenges and opportunities. Last week, I spent time evaluating applications for the Panhellenic Foundation Scholarship. I was assigned a pool of 25 applicants. Tremendous quality of students, tremendous potential. I noticed that several applicants envision a professional career in writing, film, literature, storytelling, environmental policy, journalism, public policy, ethics, citizenship. If this sample is indicative of a broader trend, then we're witnessing a historical turn. There is a demographic with increasing interest in the humanities and social sciences. This demographic is positioned, if cultivated, to empower the civic and cultural life of Greek America and the country, produce great works of literature, produce great documentaries, produce great visions about Greek American society. It is important, I believe, that we must reflect on how to harness this tremendous professional and cultural capital. It will require a long conversation. I hope we will start this discussion today. So the landscape of Greek America is shifting. And in this landscape, modern Greek programs in the United States are positioned to contribute to these developments. 
We offer resources where individuals can expand their understanding of Greek culture beyond what they know from their families and communities, and I should add, from the social media. In the words of a former student, modern Greek studies, I quote, provided me a new set of spaces where I could make meaningful connections to aspects of Greek identity and culture that I had, I had not known before, end of quote. We create platforms to share ideas, autobiographies, poetry, history, sociology, and analysis of emerging developments in the, in the interest of opening routes for new ways of the new generation of Greek Americans to connect with Greek culture. We discuss and we foreground and we showcase, we publish about new initiatives and new civic visions. We do so in the spirit of democratic inclusion. To conclude, modern Greek programs produce responsible knowledge contributing to Greek American self-understanding and educating the future leaders of the country and Greek America. Modern Greek programs contribute to the cultural and civic vitality of Greek America and in turn the United States. We can start envisioning that we can acquire distinction through cultural achievement, through achievements in the arts, and literature and the academic world beyond social and economic distinction. In the network of gifts that have enabled our presence in the world of education, I have identified some of the counter gifts we offer in return. And I promise you, we will keep doing so in the immediate and long-term future. Thank you. So I would like to thank uh, Mr. Anagnostou for this uh, very comprehensive and insightful uh, introduction. Uh, and I would like to thank him uh, specifically for painting the overall landscape of uh, the academic effort uh, in the US for the preservation of uh, Greek language and Greek culture. So while we're thanking Mr. Marinakis uh, for his generous uh, and very significant contribution, uh, now we will pass on to leaders in the Greek American community. And uh, if I can have everybody turn their cameras and, and join us, we are blessed to have with us uh, a number of significant leaders from the business world, from academia, uh, and also uh, civic leaders from the Greek American organizations who are going to share with us their passion, their commitment, and the initiatives that they have been implementing for years now for the preservation of Greek language and uh, Greek culture. So I am not going to steal the thunder from Mr. Uh, Gregory Yuzdanis uh, introducing the, uh, the panelists. Uh, I would kindly ask uh, him to, uh, intro to take over, uh, moderate the discussion. Uh, Mr. Yuzdanis is the uh, Modern Greek Humanities Distinguished Professor at the Ohio State University. And Gregory, thank you for being with us and the floor is yours. Um, thank thank you. you. Thank you very much, Nico, for the introduction. Thank you for, to Capital Link for organizing this conference. Can you hear me? Can everybody uh, hear me? Okay, uh, thank you very thank much. You. So before I go on and introduce the, uh, the panel, what I'd like to do is just have a few remarks about what this is about. This is about, as both Nico and my colleague Yorwan Agnostu have mentioned, the preservation of Greek American society and culture here in the United States. And as I was listening to the remarks, I, and how, how Mr. Anagnostu then chronicled that this, that this, in a sense, mission 
of endowing the chair began in the 1970s when the Greek American community got together to fund two positions here at Ohio State. And I was listening to the comments. What really the, what this brought to mind is how the Greek American community here in Columbus understood the dangers in a sense that are facing ethnic groups here in the United States that paradoxically, because the system is so open in this multicultural system, it can really, in a sense, threaten these, uh, these societies in a sea of assimilation and uh, homogeneity. And I think what modern Greek studies program do is, as my colleague mentioned, is, as I have seen that many times, and I've been teaching here for 35 years, is that we provide for students the first experience, institutional experience of Greekness outside of their uh, families. This is the uh, role we play. So what we're going to do in this panel is actually discuss how institutions and organizations can contribute to the maintenance of this identity. But first, because before I introduce the panelists, because I'm a professor of literature, what I'd like to do is actually begin with a poem by the great diaspora poet C.P. Kavavi, who was born and died in Alexandria in Egypt, born 1863, died 1933. And he wrote this incredible poem called Posidonians, some of you may know. And it deals with an ancient Greek colony that had been established in po uh, Posidonia, which is in near Naples, southern Italy, around 500 BC, and it's based on a true story that was written in a sense uh, 700 years later when this colony had almost disappeared. So I would like to begin with this poem as an introduction to the panel. The Posidonians had forgotten the Greek language after so many centuries of mingling with Tyrrhenians and Latins and other foreigners. The only thing ancestral that remained to them was a Greek festival with beautiful rites, with lyres and flutes, contests and crowns. And it was their habit towards the festival's end to tell each other about their ancient customs and once again to speak the Greek words that hardly any of them still understood. And so their festival always had a melancholy ending because they remembered that they too were Greeks. They too, citizens of greater Greece once upon a time. How they'd fallen, how they now become living and speaking like barbarians excluded. What a catastrophe from the Hellenic way of life. I hope this will not be described in Greek America in 600 years from now. And we have in a sense here many people that will make sure that it does not. So I will now would like to introduce our distinguished panelists and I will begin. It's John Kalamos, the founder and chairman and global chief investment officer of Kalamos Investment and chairman of the National Hellenic Museum. Mr. Drake Behrakis, the Behrakis of the Behrakis Foundation and board chairman of the National Hellenic Society organization. And Mr. Robert Bueller, the chairman of the Pan-Hellenic Scholarship Foundation and president and chief ex uh, executive officer of Open F Pantry Food of Wisconsin. Mr. George G. Horiatis, supreme president of the Order of Ahepa. Dr. Artemis Leontes, C.P. Kavafi, professor of modern Greek and comparative studies, comparative literature, and chair of the Department of Classical Studies at the University of Michigan and Mr. Nick Larigakis, President and Chief Executive Officer of the American Hellenic Institute. And we have asked the, our panelists to think generally about the following questions. And we will begin so they can talk about how their institution and their organization contributes in the sense to the promotion and uh, of education and culture in the US. So the first topic I would like them to consider then is how their organization or their foundation promotes the mission and contributes to Greek education and Greek culture. And first we will begin in order. And then what I would like to do is I hope the panelists will contribute themselves uh, after we finish the first uh, session and perhaps also get questions via chat from the floor. So we will begin with Mr. Kalamos, please. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, 
for inviting me to be here. Uh, this is really uh, gives me a very interesting perspective and uh, everything that's been said is so important. I'll just give you a little bit of my background and, and uh, going to college, studying architecture and engineering and finance, I ended up taking a uh, course in philosophy. And, and that really inspired me. In fact, I ended up taking many, many courses in, in philosophy. It introduced me more to Greek philosophy and, and that really encouraged me. In fact, coming and graduating and in that I came back, I endowed a chair at IIT Illinois Tech in philosophy. It was that important. And what I tell the students there, what philosophy in Greek philosophy is really what was important. It, it's not what you learn now what to think, but you learn how to think. And that's what we need to teach. And the mission of the National Hellenic Museum and why I'm involved is that it inspires me to, how do we teach the next generation about this? This is what's so important. Uh, me growing up, that was a really a motivating factor for me. And, and I wanna be able to do that to the next generation going forward. That's why I'm involved in the National Hellenic Museum and in many other organizations. Uh, we're involved with Drake, with the National Hellenic Society and other organizations that really try to do that. So of course, the mission is to help perpetuate Hellenism orthodoxy by promoting education and culture, which emphasizes the great immigrant experience. And one of the, one of the things in, in the museum we try and do is how have the Greek Americans lived the American dream? What motivate them and they live the American dream? And, and that, that's really important. The other thing that we've done to really perpetuate this is oral histories. Uh, and every year now we do a, uh, the, we call the trial. And the first one we did was the trial of Plato. And we had an audience there here in Chicago of over 500 people, but they weren't all Greek. They were students from U of I, U of C, Loretta, and they all were all very interested in this trial of Plato. And so uh, again, uh, one of the missions of the National Atlantic Museum is how do we bring the next generation in? Uh, we teach Greek school there. We have oral histories. Uh, we, uh, we're, we're doing lectures all, all the time. Uh, obviously in the current environment that we're in, we've had to be closed. So we, we have a lot of struggles in that environment, but it, it's really, uh, really important. We're uh, one of the things that we've been doing is honoring the Greek American veterans um, in, in doing that. And uh, we, we work with Oki Day to, to do that. So again, uh, the mission is to help perpetuate the Hellenism and Orthodoxy. And, uh, and also we promote the Greek studies uh, program by teaching the kids Greek uh, at the museum. So uh, we've been uh, very, uh, very blessed to uh, have a building in Chicago, the National Land Museum, which was donated to, to us. Uh, the land was donated by, by the city of Chicago. And so uh, uh, we, we have artifacts, we do, uh, you know, different exhibits and that. So again, the mission is to how do we bring in the next generation to motivate them? I think it's very important because it's not just teaching them Greek and teaching them this, it's really motivating them for their future. And, and I think that's what happened to me. And I think that's very important. And that's what I hope we can do going forward. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Conrad. Teaching in the next generation is obviously something that unites us all. Now we go to Mr. Bechakis. Gregory, thank you. And thank you for Capital Link for, for hosting us. And uh, uh, what makes it special for me personally is uh, you, you look at the uh, co-panelists I'm with, um, we're all working on the, on the, on the same front. We're, we're members of each other's organizations. Some of us have uh, 
collaborations within ourselves. We support each other. And I think that's a, a very critical uh, step that we need to, to, to keep us going and united. You know, what Mr. Maranaka said earlier, and I think it holds true for, for everyone that's, that's on this panel, is that, of course, it starts at home. It started with grandparents and then translated to, to the passing of the, the torch, so to speak, the parents, and then the next generation. And that's the continuity that 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 we need to fill the hole and fill those gaps. As as, as you said, we become more and more Americanized. Uh, I'm you know, very fortunate. Uh, I have a family that uh, has a strong influence uh, within their foundation, the Baracus Foundation, uh, on a number of different fronts, education, arts, culture, and sciences. And, uh, you know, it translates that to, to me with my own personal philanthropic giving uh, in my, at my alma mater, Boston College, uh, here in the Boston area. Um, and also the, uh, you know, to the organizations I'm involved with, and it's, it's obviously an honor to chair an organization. I chair the National Hellenic Society, which is relatively new compared to most of the other organizations. We're about a, a dozen years old, really, in, in formation. But um, what we saw the opportunity was, was to, to ensure that students uh, college students uh, of this generation that are quite frankly, uh, unlike we were growing up 50 years ago, where where we you know pretty much lived uh, each of our days and uh, uh, experiences in and around the church and uh, church societies and groups. And as we know, mixed marriages now is is uh, you know the, the landscape that we're, we've encountered. And uh, a lot of students, unfortunately, don't get that opportunity to, to either grow up in the church or if they do, they, they become distant and split because of the family dynamics. And so we created a program at the National Hellenic Society, partnering with the American College of Greece and Athens to create a annual cultural immersion trip, very similar to Birthright Israel, which is uh, obviously a tremendous program for the Jewish faith. And so uh, aside from you know students studying abroad uh, or taking summer trips or participating in some of the great programs uh, to Greece that our other panelists have here, like Ahepa and, and uh, Aki, uh, we decided to, to launch a program that we felt we could scale up and we found a great partner with the American College who has the capacity to do that. And so we, you know, we started off with a small group of 15 and now we're up to 100. The good news is there's plenty of demand and plenty of, of uh, uh, interest to do that. And I think that's a very important component of everything that we do or every organization does. And add, that is, first and foremost, to get young Greek Americans to Greece. Uh, you can do as much as you can here, and that's critical, of course, to, to lay that foundation and groundwork. But for them to connect the dots and make that connection, uh, it's it's life changing for some of them. It's connecting for for many. It's reconnect. I should say for for some, it's reconnecting. For many, it's it's connecting for the first time. The difference, though, is when they come back here, there's a renewed interest. And they have the opportunity to get involved in a number of organizations, uh, especially those that are on this group here. And so that is is the way we need to continue to perpetuate this. And it's a it's a a day in day out, as we all know, in the trenches. Uh, you know, we, it's not just a yearly thing or a sit back and 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 you know have an event per year. It's really we need to work these things day in and day out. And and that's how we uh, we're going to survive and get through this. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bashanki. Says so someone who has taken students often to Greece and also students to Ecuador and to Canada. I can say that even a week's trip trip can be really life changing to uh, to a student. So I can't really, in a sense, emphasize enough the importance of these trips to uh, Greece. So, Mr. Buhler, we're going to come to uh, you, please. Thank you, Greg. Uh, thank you, Capital Link. I'm, uh, I'm sitting in the Panhellenic office and I'm, I'm looking at a picture of our founder, Chris Tamaris, and he would be so appreciative of the Maranaki's very generous family donation to help fund the chair and uh, keep the heritage and the classes going uh, at Ohio. Uh, also, uh, a benefit of that is that um, George Eganosu uh, happens to be on our academic committee. So the funding of this chair also helps uh, have a quality professor, you know, of George's level review our applications, and he then can get a feel for the students that we are targeting. Uh, a little bit about the Panhellenic. We essentially invest in extraordinary, extraordinary top college students of Hellenic descent that have embraced the responsibility of being Hellenes. 
And it's not just extraordinary grades, it's uh, exceptional uh, belief in and understanding of who they are and what the responsibility they have as being Hellenes. And that's hard sometimes as you know, young adults, but uh, the applications as George can attest are uh, extraordinary. We've had 250 applications this year. Um, of those 250 applications this year on June 19th, we will be having a virtual gala and we will be giving away $250,000 to 40 students. So 40 students receive uh, scholarships out of the um, 250 applications this year. Uh, we do that by giving 20 students $10,000, needs-based students, and these families are truly in need. And we give 20 students $2,500 in scholarships. So uh, that sounds like a good thing to do and it helps them financially, but um, the story just starts there. Uh, the truth is uh, years ago, we came up with, uh, we wanted to do more. We, uh, we had to go beyond a scholarship and that's really sort of our tagline. Uh, so how do we do this? So besides helping them financially, and again, a $10,000 check to a needs-based student really does help things. Uh, and Chris always felt of not giving modest scholarships. He thought, let's give something substantial that'll impact their life and their family's life, because these are such exceptional students. So uh, going beyond a scholarship means what else should we do? Well, we have a very significant mentoring program where the scholars can align themselves with top Greek leaders in the community in medicine or law or private equity uh, or architecture. Uh, and they then sort of attach themselves to that mentor for about a year. And the mentor has a responsibility to keep in touch with a circle of about 10 uh, if they choose. Now the mentor, if, if, the, if the mentees choose, the mentor has agreed to that responsibility that they'll try to keep up. And so, you know, it tapers off, but questions come in and relationships develop very nicely between those students and the mentors. Uh, we also have a, a very deep alumni base now. Uh, each class, we've defined it, defined it so that the class of 19 or the class of 20 uh, gets to know each other over the Panhellenic weekend, a Friday, Saturday, Sunday event. And when they leave, they're, you know, they're, they're really a bonded group uh, in their class. They then move into the alumni group uh, as a class and the alumni network has taken off. We have an alumni uh, committee and alumni uh, group that has their own agenda and their own plan and their own growth and their own functions. And they are all talking to each other very actively. And again, these are exceptional students and exceptional young adults doing a very good job with each other and helping each other. Um, beyond that, we said, look, wonderful students, wonderful connecting, good mentoring. What's, what's next? Well, you have to move into internships. These students are so exceptional that any employer, any employer on the market would love to have uh, a highly educated, highly ethical, good values, orthodox values, hardworking standards, protecting the family's reputation, uh, all the values of, of, of Hellenism, of orthodoxy together. And so we have a wonderful base of students that would be excellent interns. From internships, you can obviously parlay permanent jobs and that's the key. So we, we have done this uh, you know, in many ways to try to help uh, go beyond a scholarship. We also, by the way, uh, and I think it was mentioned earlier about uh, memorializing, uh, donors, uh, actually meet their, their, uh, their scholarship uh, recipient if they choose. They don't have to, uh, but about half of our donors really personally want to meet the scholar uh, and they then sort of indirectly mentor the scholar. Uh, it's almost sort of like becoming, you know, a relative. They almost become a cousin and many mentor, many donors uh, spend time with that student, help them with their struggles, help them with encouragement, and uh, it's a very wonderful relationship. So we have, that's what, our, that's what we're doing. Uh, we have uh, to date provided over 600 uh, scholars. We have, we've provided money to over 600 scholars. And after this event, we will have given $3,750,000 in scholarships. 
This is all good. Thank you very much. And we wish there were more scholarship for our deserving students. Uh, George uh, Horiatis, please, of Ahaba. Well, thank you so much uh, to all the uh, guests and distinguished uh, panelists. Thank you. And thank you to Capital Link for, uh, for putting this together. Uh, Ahaba is pleased uh, to be with you today on this uh, topic of culture and education amongst uh, Greek Americans. Uh, HEPA is, uh, of course, a grassroots organization comprised of Hellenes and Philhellenes, and uh, along with its uh, respective family, the daughters of Penelope, the sons of Pericles, and the maids of Athena for, for almost 100 years. And when we talk about culture and education amongst Greek Americans, HEPA was first created to, to assimilate uh, Greek Americans uh, into the United States and to make them uh, more valuable contributors to our society. Um, however, uh, our uh, goals have, have, so to speak, uh, changed uh, with the times. Uh, beyond that assimilation, we also now take a look at defending and promoting Hellenism. And the culture and education amongst Greek Americans is not merely um, trying to uh, place them within the fabric of our society, because indeed, American Hellenic is code for Western civilization. Um, many US presidents have been members of AHEPA. We're very proud of that. We've had uh, a long history of uh, civic mindedness as well as with uh, philanthropy. And the uh, wonderful projects that uh, have been uh, previously announced um, by Drake, uh, by John and, and others, uh, as well as this uh, Maranakis chair, which really is very impressive. Um, are, uh, are wonderful uh, uh, components of this, uh, of this philanthropy, of this advocacy. Uh, so uh, we forged together, uh, AHEPA has been recognized for its uh, track two diplomacy. Um, we, uh, we also send students, uh, we've been doing it for uh, a very long time to Greece through our Journey to Greece uh, program. Uh, and we support all other groups uh, and I'm very pleased uh, to, to be here and to listen to the welcoming news with regards to um, promoting uh, Greek language and culture within our uh, Ohio State as well as other uh, institutions of higher learning. Uh, in fact, the HEPA uh, played a role and continues to play a role with regards to A, the creation of and B, continuation and support to our Greek uh, uh, afternoon schools all throughout the country. Uh, the 200 year relationship between uh, Greece and the United States in this particular bicentennial year makes this program, makes this topic so important because our relations with Greece as Americans uh, are at its apex. And we're able to advocate various issues which we believe contribute to the mosaic that is Greek America as well as the mosaic that is Western civilization. Whether it's support of hospitals in Greece, hospitals here, um, during the pandemic, we've had our HEPACARES where we've uh, contributed uh, an untold amounts of money as well as human capital, right? It's not just always about, uh, about the dollar. It's also about human capital. So uh, domestic programs are a wonderful uh, way of looking at things as well as that bilateral type relationship uh, between the countries to encourage our youth uh, to, uh, to consider, uh, in particularly uh, this year in 2021, um, where uh, the Greek people uh, and their youth have pulled through a difficult economic crisis uh, to draw strength from Greece's history and to draw strength from uh, this uh, wonderful 200 year relationship. So this year is a wonderful jumping off point for all of us. And uh, I'm incredibly optimistic about what these two countries and in fact, what the Greek diaspora can achieve uh, together. Uh, the, um, if we don't do it, all of us together and supporting each other and trying to get more members involved in organizations and more support for uh, all of these wonderful programs, then who will do it? And the answer is no one, no one will do it. And then what do you have? Hellenism stands a very good chance of being extinguished. We've tried that before and it's called the dark ages for good reason. So uh, with regards to the promotion and defending of Hellenism, I like to consider that all under the umbrella of what you're talking about today. Now, many of the comments that were mentioned beforehand by our illustrious panelists, 
this this homogeny that we have, this uh, Greek America may be dis- diversifying. That may be true, but Greek America will never forget its last name. Don't forget our last names. And that is what we try to impart upon our, our leaders of tomorrow, as well as to try to impart that upon our Philhellenes, which are also uh, various members of this, the largest grassroots organization. But I'm encouraged um, by uh, all the wonderful uh, programs, not just by, uh, by uh, the distinguished uh, professors, but uh, by all of you and by everybody that is participating. And I welcome us as a global uh, community to, uh, to participate en masse in what I believe will be, frankly, uh, as a result of the pandemic, uh, the largest uh, celebration of the Greek Bicentennial this year in Athens in the last week of July at the HEPA Supreme Convention. We've already entered into a memorandum of understanding uh, with, the, with the Greek nation as we continue to promote um, the very topics that you're talking about, culture and education in Greek America. It's not just Greek America. Greek America is code because we're a country like, unlike any other for Western civilization. And we know that our Greece and our Cyprus, whether it's in geography, whether it's in spirit, whether it's in uh, finance and or uh, whether it's in education, are at the front line of Western civilization. They're at the Eastern front. So uh, that is how we try to uh, promote um, that which we do. And uh, I'm just uh, so pleased and, and I'm interested in hearing more about uh, this, uh, in fact, monument that you have uh, created with today's program. Um, in this most important year, uh, as we basically express a shared vision uh, for the future of Hellenism. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Horiatis. Uh, Professor Leontis, please, you have the floor. Uh, you have to unmute yourself. Don't forget to unmute yourself. Thank you, Gregory, and thank you, Professor Anagnostu. Uh, my thanks also to all of the people who have contributed uh, to creating this professorship and also for keeping this program alive for over 40 years. I'm going to say something personal first, uh, uh, which is connected with what I do. Um, I grew up in Midland, Michigan, in a town with five Greek families, and I am third generation. Uh, I, my first learning of reading and writing was um, uh, assisted by the priest in Saginaw, Michigan, who would drive 25 miles uh, once a week to come and teach Greek to my brother and myself through ice and snow. Um, but the most important moment for me in um, really connecting with Greek culture in a way that made sense in my adult years was when the modern Greek program at Ohio State was founded. I was uh, a high school senior at that time and the Padilla project came together to insist that modern Greek should be a university language. And that spoke to me in a way that was so affirming and took my culture and identity out of the family and the kitchen table and put it on new ground. Uh, and it also was able to feed my mind as I was making the transition into adulthood when critical thinking skills were developing. So I teach in a university like Ohio State. Uh, the University of Michigan is a large public R1 university. We have many, many students. And uh, we do mission critical work, which is contributing to teaching undergraduates and graduate students. Our um, mission has four parts. It's the teaching, advising, mentoring, connecting students with their career aspirations part. Uh, the second piece of it is research and scholarship, which is uh, really about making sure that we actually have a subject, that we don't just keep reiterating adding the same thing, but we know uh, what it is that we are talking about and we develop uh, histories and biographies and critical analysis. Um, the third piece is collecting. We identify not just books for the library, but also 
um, materials to be preserved. So preservation and is a piece of heritage. What is it? What are the materials that we will need in the future in order to know and remember and not be like the Poseidonians where we have no content uh, in our subject. And then the third piece of it is public facing work. Uh, it's the returning the reciprocity of gifts that Yorgos was talking about. Uh, it's connecting with uh, the community around us. And I want to say that uh, also like Ohio State, um, the modern Greek program at, at the University of Michigan was created through the energy and initiative of people in the community around us. Uh, there's an organization called the Foundation for Modern Greek that endowed the professorship. Um, there were students at the university who insisted that modern Greek should be taught. So there was a real commitment that was expressed from the community. And, um, and we continue to to honor that commitment by doing things like organizing the Illinomathia proficiency test once a year, uh, but also producing events and um, asynchronous material that's shared on our website. Um, so those are the four points of our mission. Uh, of course, I, we were asked also what is our primary audience, and I would say that the primary audience is our students. And I want again to reiterate something that was said um, before, which is um, that that our audience of students, which is is some people who identify as Greek and many people who do not identify as Greek, but come into contact with living Greece, with modern Greece for the first time when they're with us. These are people who are away from home. This is their first step away from home. So definitely, you know, the memory of what happens at home is very significant. And we all know that as we grow older, uh, but the second point of significance happens when we leave home and when we develop new, um, we, we identify our talents and we develop new skills and new knowledge uh, at that moment when our critical thinking skills are, are developing and when we choose what we will, what we, um, what our subjects are going to be, what we care about. Um, so that, uh, in a nutshell, I would say is what we do in our modern Greek program, and I think in general that is what modern Greek programs in the United States um, do, and it's very, very mission critical work. Thank you, Artemis, for explaining again one more time the role that university programs play in the preservation of this identity. And now we come to Nick Lagakis, please. Thank you, Professor. It is an honor to be with such a distinguished panel. I'd like to begin by congratulating Capital Link and Nico and Olga for all the great work that they do overall for investment <laughs> regarding Greece and for organizing this panel. Congratulations to Jorgen Agnostu for uh, the, the chair of, of this position. And of course, to Mr. Marianakis for having the vision, the wherewithal and the commitment to understand the importance of the Greek American community and its perpetuation by virtue of endowing this particular chair. Um, allow me one quick anecdotal uh, story vignette the Artemis Leontis uh, kind of uh, brought to my attention. When I was growing up in an immigrant household, we spoke Greek and everything was pounded to us in that colloquial folklore kind of way. I enjoyed playing baseball every year. And of course, your parent had to sign the permission form. And every year was a challenge. My mother never wanted to sign it. My father, you know, was, didn't even care. Uh, and one particular year, my senior year, after four years, she would not want to sign that last year form. So I made a deal with her. I said, look, you sign me this form and I will wash the dishes every single night when I come home from school and after <laughs> practice. So when it came to uh, fulfill my obligation that I promised to my mother, she said, and I get a little emotional, she said, you sit next to me, here's a Greek book, you read to me in Greek and I will wash the dishes. <laughs> so... You know, it, it got me to thinking a little bit there in terms of, hey, there's something into regarding this whole Greek thing. Usually I would have gone to Webster's Dictionary, but today I went to Siri and I wanted, and I put in the word culture and how it defines it. And it says, and I quote, the customs, arts, social institutions, and achievements of a particular nation, people, or other social group. So I submit to you and everyone listening, is there a bigger and better glorious brand name than the word Greece, the nation that ties us all here together? I personally, and maybe I'm being biased, but I don't think so. However, we take great pride as Greek Americans, and why? Because 
we come, we are a people of the founders of democracy, and we live in what can be arguably called the best practice and form of democracy. But that takes citizen responsibility to be able to have a democracy and to be able to perpetuate it, 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 it moving forward. In our case, at the American Hellenic Institute, the founder Gene Rossidi started this organization almost 50 years ago. We will celebrate our 50 year anniversary in 2024 with the express idea that Greece and the Eastern Mediterranean in 74, specifically Cyprus, was being challenged. And we can't disassociate, in my opinion, the two. We can't perpetuate and continue to educate the Greek American community on the values, ideas of our ancient uh, uh, fathers on, of Hellenism, and yet where it's being challenged and threatened today, we forget about it because it's not going to do us any good to make it survive here if it dies at its roots. That may be a stretch, but if you follow developments in the Eastern Mediterranean and how Greece is challenged every single day by its neighbor Turkey and other malign actors, you may not think is so. So the organization was founded on the principle of strengthening U.S.-Greek relations and U.S.-Cyprus relations, specifically within the context of public policy and talking about the Eastern Mediterranean, but how Greece and Cyprus uh, bring to bear uh, a, a, a relationship that's mutually beneficial to all countries involved, and not because of interest, because of shared values and ideas, which were also reiterated by President Biden in his message to, uh, on, on Greek Independence Day and the, 20, and the 200 year anniversary of Greek Independence Day. So how do we do that? Well, it's evolved over the years, but our outreach is public policy to obviously the people who make public policy in Washington, at Capitol Hill, uh, State Department, the White House, academia, the think tank communities, and the media. All of them are interplay and have a role to play within the formulation and strengthening of this policy. But as things have evolved, and we've identified the third, fourth plus generation of Greek American involvement that we're in, and how that potentially could threaten the future perpetuation of Hellenism in America, uh, we decided 18 years ago to start a program called The Future of Hellenism in America. Three uh, professors here have spoken at these conferences, and John Calamos was a sponsor of our conference in Chicago a number of years ago. Well, we've did 18 of, year, 18 of these conferences. We now have accumulated the select papers, a volume of almost 500 pages that will be published this year in, uh, uh, in, in the United States through our, our foundation. But as it relates also to the next generation, which is critical, and others have talked about it, and I congratulate Drake Barakas of the National Hellenic Society, and of course, AHEPA, and all others, I am a strong believer no matter how much instruction we have at any level of academia in the United States, the only sure way we can make them feel it in terms of the next generation is to take them to Greece and to Cyprus, because I always like to include both countries. So in our case, we looked at the public policy and how difficult it is to engage the next generation on the issues affecting US policy in the Eastern Mediterranean. So we created a program 12 years ago of where we take 10 qualified college students uh, to Greece and Cyprus through Washington, a 17-day immersion program. There's no academic uh, courses taught here. We have them meet with policy stakeholders, presidents, foreign ministers, military, and others, where they have an opportunity to meet with these individuals and have a discussion uh, on the issues that we perpetuate. I can go on and on, but again, Another area that we're involved in with Dan Jorogakis, we have an annual uh, online uh, policy journal that Dan Jorogakis uh, um, is the editor, where we talk about contemporary uh, themes regarding the Greek American community that we publish every year on different subject matters. And I'm very proud to say that we just signed an agreement to be co-publishers with the Journal of Modern Hellenism at Queens College University uh, in New York City. So we are trying to be as active as we can, keeping keeping true to our core mission, but always being cognizant that we need to also be able to advocate and to perpetuate and facilitate and help whatever way we possibly can the next generation of Greek Americans to be actively involved in the issues that affect us uh, in a community. I have more things to say, but I, can, I will talk about them during the discussion. 
Okay, we actually have about 15 more minutes and Robert suggested that perhaps we go to the fourth question here. Just feel free to jump uh, in. Please keep your comments brief. How do you see your organization's involvement with modern Greek studies or the university? And what role do you think the university has in your own uh, organization? So feel uh, free to jump in. Uh, anybody? I'm going to start first for, I'm just going to interrupt if anyone else is starting to talk, but I just want to say that uh, that there are so many ideas that have been put on the table here. Yeah. And um, I think part of the beauty of this conversation is that it shows a number of different stakeholders. I really, really agree with the last point uh, that Nick's made, which is that, you know, things that are happening in the classroom really come uh, to fruition when people take a trip, the Ahi trip. I mean, these are just amazing resources. And I think that the, the I, I, I don't want to say what modern Greek programs uh, should do because I've already talked about that, but I do want to say that one of the challenges of the program is to find the resources for our students uh, to make the connection between their modern Greek studies their, and their career aspirations and other kinds of interests that they will develop later. So, you know, creating a network, and I, I know that we've been doing that. Uh, it's, you know, we've had collaborations with Aki, which are really, really significant, but all of us working together to have networks across various institutions is really, really significant. And I will uh, turn the floor over to the next. All right. Anybody who would like to contribute then? I, I, can, I can go ahead and, and jump in if I may. I can't say that we've had an active one-on-one -on -one with modern Greek studies programs other than that we obviously support them. But I would also like to say modern Greek studies programs really need to reflect upon their, their curricula themselves. It, you know, literary, classics, and all that is fine. And the language is very important and a critical component to an understanding of one's culture and heritage. But I submit to you uh, in a contemporary society, uh, and, and the issues that we face as a community here and abroad, we need to also focus on more on more programs that deal with the social sciences and the history of modern Greece per se, and to be proud of that. I mean, how many students really know, how many Greek Americans really know what Greece's contributions were, for example, in World War II, which they were significant, but you never see on any movies ever made regarding World War II, Greece is not even a footnote. The heroic stands of the people of Crete for example, or the destruction in 1922 in what happened in Smyrna, and the achievements of the Greek American community. I understand there's a great program at Ohio State led by Mr. Anagnostu on the Greek American community. The Greek American community has had tremendous successes. These need to be documented. The last book that I'm aware of is Charlie Moscos. So I would say the modern Greek studies need to re reflect more and expand more on the contemporary issues and teach those. And may I add also, we're only 1.3 million individuals really in this country. So we're very, we're less than one half of 1% of, of all the population. But what did 1821 t show us? Phil Hellenes, Phil Hellenes. And through these programs, I'm sure we're not just reaching out to Greeks or Greek Americans. We are also creating Phil Hellenes, which is critically important in this juncture of our development as well. Nick, do you well uh, let me. Yeah, go ahead, Robert, let, go ahead. I love that Phil Helene lead in, Nick. Thank you so much. Uh, so uh, a few thoughts. Uh, you know, we're using words like preservation. Uh, we're using words like maintenance. Um, I would suggest we tilt this a little differently uh, and that we use words more like growth, the growth of classics departments uh, and the growth of uh, understanding of who the Helenes are and how we've contributed to the world. And uh, let me suggest, uh, I know at Stanford, they made a very big deal uh, of interdisciplinary uh, learnings. So they were very skewed for you know, tech. So there was a lot of students that were computer science, a lot of mathematics, um, but so that they didn't come out just kind of using half of their brain, uh, they, the buzz was you know, interdisciplinary. So you should then take a, uh, a uh, uh, arts class, you know, uh, art, art history class, or you should take a philosophy class. And so uh, that, that took off. Every student uh, that graduated with their primary major had a, had a minor or even a double major 
uh, in something that was more classics and more um, humanities. And that was prideful. Everybody, you know, they would say, oh, you're, you're a computer science. Oh yeah, but I'm also art history. And when you talk to the students about it, they don't talk about computer science. They talk about their art history class. To John Calamo's point, you know, he's taking architecture, he's taking mathematics, he's, but what he talked about was philosophy. So I think we're focusing almost necessarily on the small segment of our own Hellenes. And I think we should be focusing on that other population out there because classics classes typically have maybe five or 10%, at least our students that we review, uh, not that many are in these classes. So if it's a class of 30, maybe there are three or five Greeks at most. Uh, so it's that other group. So just imagine, Nick, that you're going to go in and lobby to a congressman and you come in and you're going to do your, your pitch about Greece. And that congressman, Mike Smith, says, oh, Nick, you know, I, I, I got to tell you, I loved my philosophy class in, in college. And, and even though I was, uh, you know, a, a, a chemistry major, I, I really love my, it, it changed my life. And they taught me not just philosophy, but as John said, not just what it is, but how to live life and how to, uh, you know, view life. So if we can arm ourselves uh, and we can tilt the focus to growth and we can uh, encourage non-Greeks in these classes to, to learn life lessons, life lessons and life quotes and life philosophies that they then proudly bring forward in their own banking, uh, law, um, architecture world, uh, and sort of promote our own Hellenism, our own culture, our own history, non-Greeks. I think that's a, that, is the, that is the target of us. The reason I say this is that when I was a young investment banker, you know, investment bankers were quoting Sun Tzu, The Art of War, you know, and I read the book and, you know, go get them and, you know, all these, and I said, you know, now I say to myself, why were they quoting, you know, an Asian sort of culture when all these other philosophies that are Hellenic philosophies are so vast and so meaningful and so full? Uh, so I, I, I'm, as, I, I'm just sort of suggesting this twist uh, to make a growth and not uh, 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 sort of maintain and uh, preserve. Thank you. But John Collins, how would you react to that, to the role of culture? Because you opened this up with the importance of philosophy in your own upbringing. Yeah, well, I, I think it's very important because uh, what we're seeing now is the, the, uh, so many of the kids are being brainwashed. They're, they're, not, they're not learning history. They're not learning the, the focus, that perspective of history. And, and I, I think that that's really important that that they learn that. And the uh, Hellenic studies, uh, I hope, are teaching those 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 studies so they have that sense of history. You know, where did Western civilization begin? W how did that occur? What happened? So it's really important. That's why I emphasize, uh, you know, understanding that that culture and that. One of the things I've said at the museum quite a bit. It's it's you don't know where you're going unless you know where you came from, and and that is important in in studying the the, the Greek culture, the history, and uh, the philosophy in that. Artemis, since you're a professor, how would you respond to to that? Well, I would I would say that um, our programs are interdisciplinary. Uh, there we are working across departments, our students do take history classes. They uh, come to us with varying interests. We have someone who is completing a degree who is combining economics and modern Greek. Um, you know, there, I, can, I could go through the list of people who are, uh, of course, pre-med in modern Greek, but history, political science, international uh, studies, uh, the program itself is interdisciplinary and there is no absence. I mean, one of our faculty members is an anthropologist, a social science scientist, so there's really no absence of um, the exactly the kinds of things you're talking about. And um, I, I embrace the idea of growth. Um, the, I, the, you know, the, a major challenge is that our student population is always changing. We have a moving target. Uh, how do we know who they are? We have to uh, 
really be working with them to see what their interests are, what, um, uh, where we can supplement their education, but it is always a matter of growth. It can't be anything but. It is not about holding back and preserving and teaching them something uh, that I, you know, remember learning when I was five or six years old. Um, it's always a forward-looking thing. The other thing is that our subject is modern Greece. It's not ancient Greece and modern Greece itself is changing, it's alive. So I really embrace the idea of growth. I think that that is absolutely the model that we are working um, with and thank you for that. Just a, just a quick follow on to that. I think that very quickly on campus, word spreads among the students as to saying, oh, you gotta take this class. It's really a great class. So, you know, Jody Maxman at Stanford, you gotta take her class. It's energizing, you'll learn a lot. Uh, the classics that you'll learn, you will you'll have for life, and everybody said I got to get that class, and they and they wanted to go to those classes. So uh, the the class that can ignite the students and spread the word uh, will suddenly be populated, and that classics department will be you know growing. They, everybody will want to be certain to get into that those units. Well, it's uh, it's very interesting that we teach the students right when we had the trial of Socrates. We had the, uh, the two attorneys really, really hitting it on. And then we had the whole audience hooked. And I was on the, I was on the jury, uh, but they had the whole audience vote and they voted he was guilty. <laughs> when they came up to me, they said, well, what'd you think? I said, well, we haven't learned anything in 2000 years. This is what he's guilty. <laughs> so it's, We've got to teach the students uh, that history too. It's it's important. I have to say that since we're coming close to the end, on a on a happy note, that I teach a class here, an introduction to classical literature. We have three hundred students in that uh, in in that class. That is, three hundred students want to enrich in them their lives by taking a class on introduction to classical uh, literature. Does anybody have what time for just one short comment? We have about one or two more minutes. Yes, uh, if I could on, on that yeah. topic. Okay, so, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, a couple, couple of points. Uh, we are in, a, uh, in an era, uh, as I uh, had previously alluded to, with regards to uh, Hellenism, where th there has been a small and misinformed uh, movement to remove uh, the classics from our educational system. And I think we have to double down and, and create the, an issue with regards to that. Uh, the topic that was uh, brought up uh, uh, previously by the professor, uh, yes, uh, you know, modern Greek, and, and frankly, the defense of modern Greek uh, would not be uh, the worst idea in terms of adding that to the, uh, to the curriculum, so to speak. But that is a very important topic. We cannot allow that removal of those classics. You know, when um, uh, 200 some years ago during the bicentennial, the Greek committees of the United States, uh, these were individuals that um, were uh, schooled in the Greek classics. Uh, they not only knew Latin, but they knew uh, uh, Greek in the form that they uh, understood it to be at that point in time. Um, so this is, a, this is a fine line for us and we have to all uh, work together to, to ensure that, uh, that this uh, does not occur. Number two, uh, if I may, I take a look at some of the comments that are on the question and answer uh, on the webinar itself. And, and one excellent point, um, although there are many, um, was brought up with regards to charter schools. Yes, um, uh, we should consider and assist uh, with, with charter schools, that is uh, secondary schools uh, with regards to perpetuating the Greek culture and the Greek language. Um, HEPA continues to do that, and I'm sure other groups uh, do as well. But um, it shouldn't wait until college. Uh, we should uh, hit them early, hit them often, hit them hard, and uh, and continue all throughout. Uh, so, um, in fact, in uh, in Delaware, and I think there's at least uh, 20 uh, various different uh, Hellenic charter schools. Uh, we're talking about K through 12 uh, with regards to that, and they're uh, dual immersion uh, schools, i.e., um, uh, as was asserted by John uh, earlier, in terms of science and, and promotion of other. Uh, uh, very uh, much core topics. These are topics that are taught in the Greek language uh, uh, at these schools. So uh, we should not turn a blind eye uh, towards what is a very effective method and manner of doing it uh, in terms of the charter schools and our secondary schools, as well as uh, those that uh, that specialize in K through 12 type. Mm -hmm. So um, 
you know, the battle is not just in college. Uh, the battle is everywhere. And uh, that's, uh, we, I would like to see us expand as a, as a uh, Greek America in terms of uh, what we're looking to perpetuate and how we do so. Thank you. Um, Mr. Rizal, I had Thomas Drake, one comment. Can we just- Yeah, no, the, uh, the education theme has obviously been, been around for, you know, started in Greece, right? And we continue that today. Uh, the challenges though, is, is we need to create newer programs. Uh, we need to follow the new media that's out there that's being used in the classrooms, Google Classroom, new forms of technology. Um, one of the beauties, I know we're all sick of Zoom. We've had enough of all this, uh, you know, attending webinars and stuff. But think of the, the amount of quality of content that we've been able to collectively put out there. And a lot of it is, is stuff that educated a lot of us in terms of things we never knew or we've just learned about. That has to be harnessed and, and find a way to get to the classroom and get to the student um, and get through either through university programs and without. Because at the end of the day, you know, we're mainstream and we meet, meet to ensure that, uh, that the uh, United States, the diaspora in general, uh, that Americans understand that uh, you know they truly are uh, a product of Greece, and that Greek greatness is alive and well in them. And let's not you know let's not wait you know to the next celebration. You know we're, we're planning and doing things as best as we can with the 200th this year. But it's it's a day every day we need to be celebrating, and every day we need to get this content and get these programs that we're all working on together. Um, into the classroom, into our families, into our students, and, and not uh, lose sight of the fact that it's a, it's a daily battle, not uh, let's wait for the next celebration. So thank you. I hope that uh, Mr. Brosson, next year you can organize an another seminar for another <laughs> endowment in another university somewhere. So thank you very much to all the uh, panelists, and I turn it all over to uh, Nicholas. Thank you. I, I will say just one word and that we leave Nicholas close the webinar. I would just uh, like to say that uh, so many interesting things have been said today. And for all uh, those of us uh, living outside Greece, we know the challenge we face to safeguard our identities in the sea of assimilation. All those initiatives that you presented today act as islands for the preservation and dissemination of Greek identity, and we can't thank you enough for that. Thank you, so I pass the, um, my brother will close the webinar. Thank you very much to all of you. Well, I wanted to say that uh, it has been a particularly insightful and a very rich discussion. Again, we started, uh, with uh, the endowment of the chair by Mr. Marinakis. Uh, and then we opened the discussion to the broader topic of how to preserve uh, Greek language and heritage uh, in, in the US. Uh, I want to, to, uh, to go back to what Olga was saying, that um, all of us, we are proud Greeks, but we're also proud of Americans. And I think the Greek American society as uh, the professors also indicated, it has developed. Uh, it has developed over time, <clears throat> and uh, therefore being assimilated and enjoying the richness of the American society, it becomes even more important and sometimes more difficult and challenging to keep with our Greek roots. So, what all of you are doing, I think, is extremely valuable, extremely important. And frankly, it's part of our daily life. So I would like to thank you all for your uh, <clears throat> commitment, for your devotion. Uh, I'd like also to thank Mr. Marinakis, but I'd like also to thank you being on the trenches every day. Uh, so <clears throat> thank you. It's been a wonderful uh, uh, panel discussion. I'm very proud and humbled of both Olga and I that Capital Link had the opportunity to do this. And we hope to be able to do more of those in the future. And uh, I will conclude exactly by going back to what Drake was saying. All of you, all of us, we work together, we support each other, we cooperate. So cooperation, I think, and having a common objective and a common goal is what, in a way, makes things easier and drives us all. So thank you very much. Thank you. And apologies for my phone ringing at the wrong time. <laughs> <laughs>